Hi, today I'm happy to announce Medlock UI as open source. You can find the code on GitHub and uh, I'm just going to demonstrate what it can do. Uh, first, you need to have an OpenEHR template. I'm not going to be going into that in this video. You can just uh, follow the tutorial on the blog or uh, you can just download this. And I've already have it downloaded on my machine. So after that, just open the Medlock UI website that is uh, currently just hosted from GitHub directly. And uh, here you see that there is really nothing up here first. Uh, you just need to go into settings and add that template that you just downloaded. So I'm just going to Medlock UI example v0. And once you add that, you can see that it shows up right away on this screen. Uh, I'll be showing some of the features that you can um, use this for. So just go to settings and we'll start customizing this template. This is a basic Glasgow Coma Scale and uh, it has the Glasgow Coma Scale and the pulse rate of the patient when they come in. Uh, so we'll be customizing this a little bit. The first thing that we want to do is that take out this DV text item. It just renders by mistake, to be honest. So let's just set render to false. Uh, the thing is, even if you s set the render for write to false, the read will still be present. So you need to set that separately. Uh, the read and write are both uh, handled differently for most of the components. Um, so that is good enough. And I'm just going to click save. And for whatever reason you think, uh, you know, uh, you don't want to display this title, and just not display it. There are other configuration options. We we'll go ahead and take a look at all of them. And I'm just going to save this. And you can see that it renders uh, a little bit better now. So let's just go to the settings and uh, let's make it horizontal instead of uh, vertical. So for that, just click the composition and just make that horizontal. That's it. So up next, we'll do something a little complex. So suppose the a uh, physician selects uh, these options. What if you want to automatically calculate the total score based on these three choices? Well, you can do that using the compute function. And uh, in fact, I already have a function written here, um, but I'll, I'll do it from scratch for you guys. Uh, so what we need is we need to pass a function here, which is just a plain JavaScript function that takes in the whole state of the form currently. And you can view the state of the form by clicking on view source, and it's just a JSON object. Uh, it takes the state of the JSON object and it should return a number that you want, uh, because uh, this is a count um, uh, component. This is a count uh, component, so we'll be returning a number. So what we do first is click on view source, and let's copy these, three things into our file. So now we have three paths. So we can see that each of this is, one is for uh, the eye response, the other is for the verbal response, and the other is for the motor response. So what we'll be doing next uh, is, I'm just going to comment this out first. Uh, we'll be uh, giving a function. So this is an arrow function uh, under JavaScript. So you can do this if you want to. You can also pass in a normal function if you want. So first, we need all the three uh, options to be chosen before we can automatically calculate this. It doesn't make sense if you calculate a Glasgow comma scale with only two values, right? So we'll first verify if all of these are present, right? So first, let's do that for uh, this. We need that. We need and the next one and the next one. Right. So let's just uh, to test our thing, let's just return one for now just to see if this function works. Um, so if all the three are selected, it should automatically render one here. So, and you can see it does render one, and you can also see that the current value is set to one. Um, as you can see that it overrides any manual input if all the three are present. So, only if you select it to something else, you can change something here. If it's selected, 
it always is a 1. So you need to keep that in mind. So we don't want a 1 here, we actually want the sum of all 3. So let's do that. So that's that plus that plus the motor response. And that's it. That is the function that we want. And let's just paste that. And you can see it's 8. Let's just check if it works with all other values. It's 15. Yep. Seems to work just fine. So I'm going to save that. And uh, let's verify it here. None, two, three, six. Perfect. So let's go to settings again. And now we'll do something uh, for the rendering part of it. We'll, we can also render things conditionally. So we want this rate to only render if the presence is present, right? It doesn't make sense to uh, measure a heart rate when the heartbeat is not present. So we will first see the source here and we, we want this, this heartbeat presence code to be equal to that. So we will take this and copy that to VS code. So here this is a much simpler function. So we just take in the data and if it has this and it is equal to this particular code, return true. That's all you actually need to do because even undefined um, returns false. So this is true right now and it will be false. But for the sake of... Uh, Consistency, let's return false here. So that's present, not present. So now just save that. And there, you have an interface element that is ready to be used by clinicians. And this uh, whole thing is an OpenEHR composition in the flat format. And when somebody submits it, it shows them a different uh, interface, a little bit different. Um, I'm just going to refresh this and uh, show you present 24 to summit. You can see that we have all of these being rendered directly from the platform. So I hope you uh, found that useful and uh, you can find the blog in the link below. I'll also add the um, GitHub repo. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.